Welcome to Before the Bell, your home for actionable pre-market content. Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Wednesday, March 16th. It's 637 as I'm starting the video. And as always, please run your player at 1.5x. Taking a quick look at futures, got a nice rally on our hands. Bitcoin up 1.8%. Equities up between about 1.2 and 1.8%. Gold's down a little bit, four tenths. Copper's up 1.5%. And on the macro front, we've got two big things in front of us. We've got Jay Powell at 2 o'clock with the rate announcement and then a presser at 2.30. And then we have on Friday a huge options expiration where $3 trillion is rolling off. So uh, yesterday I did a members-only a subscriber only uh, video in the afternoon talking about positioning for J Powell and uh, the month end option expiration. I'm not going to go through all those details, but just uh, to summarize, expect a lot of volatility. I would ratchet down your positioning. I would not go you know, all in long or all in short, that's a complete dart throw. Uh, we know after rate announcements, prone to knee-jerk reactions. Either way, probably twice. Uh, and those knee-jerk reactions can last from, you know, a couple hours to uh, the end of the week. And with that big option expiration right on the heels of... Uh, Jay Powell, we could be in for a lot of volatility. Uh, I wouldn't want you to be in a position where, you know, you guessed wrong. So I would be going into uh, the uh, the FOMC this afternoon with just your high conviction stuff, uh, either a balanced long short setup or just light with your core holdings that you you don't really care maybe IRA stuff you know you go down two percent up two percent it doesn't really make any difference but just don't get caught on the wrong end of a whipsaw move uh, between now and the end of the week that said I favor higher not enough to go out on the deep end but I think uh, I'll show you some technicals here this morning and also we know that on uh, recent rallies in March, er, you know, they rally up and then everybody buys puts and it goes down and, but the bears can't break that February low. So on a reaction higher today, good chance you're gonna get some additional short covering, which would be fuel uh, to power this rally higher. And don't forget, with this overnight rally, we're going to have a gap opening below. So uh, when we get close to the cash open at 930, mark your gaps to find out where we're at. I wouldn't be, you know, don't put it past them to, you know, flash down, fill that gap, then go higher. Or what is often the case ahead of, Powell, as it gets closer, the market will just oscillate in a very narrow range, just waiting for that announcement. So a lot of possibilities today. Just uh, I can't emphasize enough. Uh, go into it knowing that you could get a dramatic move in either direction. And, you know, that bearish scenario is, you know, if Powell deviates from his telegraphed move of 25 basis points or somehow in the presser comes out with some kind of hawkish you know spin on the thing which might send equities into a tailspin so let's start out here with the vix we know we've had persistent closes above uh, 30 31 range we drop down just below Last, uh, last night at the close. So today, uh, keep your VIX on your dashboard and 
correlate that with what you're seeing in equities. So for instance, if equities are uh, driving higher, you want to see VIX falling. The cautionary red flag is if you see a green VIX and a rising equity environment, obviously that those two don't match. So if you see a rising VIX and a rising equity price, uh, be cautious because that means people are loading up on uh, protection. Let's move into the, the charts. SPY daily, we're still inside this uh, falling wedge, but uh, we've rallied overnight. So there's a good chance that we will break out of this wedge here this morning uh, with the gap below, as we just discussed. I would be looking overhead at 432.50 and uh, 4.35 to fill this gap. And then, uh, as always, know where your moving averages come into play. Here we've got the falling 200 and the falling 50. Those are going to be resistance sticking points for price as it tries to move up. But I think. Uh, just from a technical standpoint, this open gap is unfinished business. So you get a move up here to uh, fill the gap. And then there's a big decision point at the 200. Can it recapture it and move up here to 440? Uh, and back touch the 50? Or is price uh, stalled? at the 200. What I've done here on the SPY 2 hour, notice the double bottom that we spoke of yesterday. Notice the bullish divergence that we have on both momentum and RSI. That's usually a good setup for a long. We've got the downtrend line. We should open above that this morning. And then we've got a number of uh, uh, resistance levels ahead. There's that uh, open gap. And we know that the 200 is coming down right in around 435. Uh, actually, 436 and a half. I've got them here on the 30 minute chart just for reference. And here's that 3% projected move out of a double bottom with bullish divergence. We've already broken the 30-minute uh, downtrend line. So first up this morning, we've got 428 as resistance. Then it should be a quick move up to 432. If all things uh, stay positive, then we've got the gap. Then we've got uh, the 200 right at the top of the gap here, 436 and a half. And then we've got the 50 coming in at 440. So keep in mind that these projected moves aren't gospel. That means it's not a given like, okay, now I can plan on 440, etc. Those are projected targets, but they tend to work more often than they don't. The fly in the ointment here is the big declining moving averages uh, uh, that are coming into play off of the daily chart. And just to backtrack here to the, uh, to the daily chart, I wanted to make one last point. Say we get this rally and we do go up and tag 440 and it stalls there. The conclusion is bear market rally, right? With price still uh, below the 50, you'd have to conclude that it was a kickback rally, but now it's going to start heading down again. Now, what would change my mind? If price could break above 440, you know, recapture. Uh, you can't see it here, but there the 20 is here on this uh, downtrend line. 
recapture the 20, recapture the 200, recapture the 50, what I would be doing and will be doing is then recalibrating everything to 440 and seeing how far this rally could take us. So I think 440 for me is the line of demarcation in the sense that if price has enough power to recapture the uh, 50 at this 440 level, then I would be, you know, uh, if I had strikes from lower, I'd be recalibrating everything right there to 440. Um, I mean, could it happen today? Sure, but I doubt it. Uh, could it happen, you know, Thursday or Friday? Sure. Could it happen next week? You know, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but that would be a really, really important place on the charts. 440 for uh, for SPY. Uh, moving on to the Qs, we've got this very well-defined uh, downtrend channel. We do have some bullish divergence. Notice we got, I don't have it marked here, but we've got a double bottom here. We had a low and then another low, but at higher PPO and higher RSI. So we're set to break out this morning. And the first line of resistance here on the daily chart is uh, 340. Then we've got a level at 346. Notice we've got uh, a full bearish stack on the EMAs all lined up bearishly. And we've got the 50 coming in here at uh, 351. So that'll be resistance on the way up here on the two hour chart. Uh, here's that uh, 335 is going to be an important level on the way up. And then we get into this uh, uh, area here where we've got the largest volume over price bar coming in around this 345, uh, really, really between 342 and 347 is going to be a major area of resistance. And you see where the daily 50 comes in is going to be down here at uh, 351. So that's going to be, if, if the Qs are going to power up, uh, as we discussed on SPY, then recapturing 351 is going to be really, really important in the larger scope of things. Still a lot of work to do between here and there, but uh, if a rally is going to take place between 330 and 350, uh, we can do really well if we're on the right side of that. So just taking a quick look down at the 30-minute chart. We're, last night we closed at the top of this old uh, filled gap. And then we've got the uh, resistance levels all the way up. IWM uh, still trapped in a big trading range, but the one thing uh, I will note is that we just recently had SPY and QQQ make a run for the lows while IWM basically just treaded water. So we've already had a double tap of that February low uh, came rather quickly. Uh, now, price has just been treading, uh, going back and forth inside this trading range. So it's actually, by doing nothing, it's been outperforming. So that might be something to uh, consider if this whole thing is going to turn out to be a correction within a bull market and then we break out and then go back up to new highs or this is just a flat flag within an ongoing downtrend and then we break the low and head down to 170. That remains to be seen. But uh, looking at futures, 
I mean, they're up like SPY and QQQ. So near term, we want to look to the upside. We've got a layer of resistance at 200. Then we've got uh, the downtrend line and the 50 right here at around 203. Those will be uh, important resistance levels to overcome if the um, uh, if the rally is to proceed. And then that's going to be a big, big level if price can recover the 50, which comes in at 203.76. You get a recapture and hold of that, then you can recalibrate around the 50 and maybe it's got enough horsepower to get back up towards uh, 210. Let's take a look at the lower time frames. Here uh, you see where the downtrend line comes in on the two hour. Uh, there'll be some resistance here at uh, 198. Then you've got the downtrend line and then you've got a layer of resistance here at 200, then 202, and then you've got uh, the 50 coming in at, uh, what did we say it was? Uh, let's look here. 203.76 is where that comes in. So those will be places you want to uh, mark on your chart. Here's a real clear look on the 30 minute chart. Uh, you got a downtrend line and then the levels uh, all the way back up. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for spending some time with me this morning. What I do each and every day is try to set you up for success as a trader by giving you the objective levels to trade against. Um, I think the longer you stay with me, the more confidence you'll have in my levels. And that's really half the battle. If I can take the majority of the technical work off of your plate, have you trust them, and then that'll allow you to work on your execution skills of you know how you want to trade it, where uh, whether you're on the daily time frame or trading the five minute, the levels work. And so then it's all about uh, building up your skill set as a trader uh, with execution either during the day or as a swing trader. So uh, if that appeals to you, please hit the subscribe button uh, and the, the thumbs up and then jump over to the show notes where you'll find a link to the blog site where uh, you can drop in your email address, join the team, get an invite link to our trading room. Be glad to have you there. And then morning, noon, or night, whenever I have a thought about the markets, you'll get that right in your email box. You won't have to go hunt for it. Or, you know, sometimes there's stuff that goes out that never makes it to social media. So uh, I encourage you to do that. And then, of course, pass the link along to your trading circle to others that may benefit from the work. So moving on to fat man names. Facebook, big downtrend, but carving out a nice base here where we've had a ton of uh, reflexive buyers here at 187. And now we broke out yesterday. So you've got a downtrend line and an open gap above. This thing could, you know, if the, if the rally proceeds and you get this breakout above the downtrend line, I don't know where it's trading here in the pre-market, but you could look forward to a gap fill. And I think, uh, excuse me. Uh, break above the gap. Sorry about that. I had an alarm go off, obviously. Um, anyhow, uh, fill the gap, break out above 198. I think it would really have some running room to the upside. Apple bottomed out, 
coming back up to 156. I think if it can take that out this morning, you got a run to 159. Then you've got an open gap up towards uh, 163. 163 will be a really, really important line. Why? Rejection, bunch of rejections, bunch of support, bunch of support. Um, uh, it has made a couple of runs at that and, and has failed. I can I can easily see this uh, if if things get going that we make a run up to 163. So this morning, depending on where it opens, uh, I like I like I mean if the queues are going to go up, Apple's got to be a part of it. So uh, you know as does all the fat man names. So you know you'll have to decide. You know, am I just going to play the basket? You know, just buy the cues. You know, keeping an eye on the key uh, fat man names, or are you going to target a specific fat man name, whether it be Facebook or Apple or Microsoft or whatever? Um, and what I would recommend is, if you're just going to play the basket, you can create that montage on your screen where you've got Microsoft, Apple, Amazon. Uh, Facebook, Tesla, uh, Google on your matrix. And if you see all them grinding higher and you're long the queues, you can stay long with confidence. If you start seeing, you know, one by one, those names start to roll over. That's going to be reflected in, uh, in the queues. So whenever I'm trading that basket of, of the cues, I like to have the individual charts of the of the big fat man names handy just to see how things are progressing uh, uh, with those names. So I like Apple here. I like uh, just from a technical standpoint, I like the odds of being able to make a run up to 163. And then a breakout above 163 would be uh, huge uh, technically. Um, but like I said, there's a long way between 156 and 163. So we'll see. I have to see how it goes. Uh, Tesla 60 minute uh, got a hold 800. Uh, I can see a path up to this 835. That has been a big level in the past. We know where the 200 is coming in approximately. So we've got a downtrend line and then the 200 to recapture if this thing is going to have a pronounced move to the upside. And I would certainly have the uh, 200 and this 860 level marked on the chart. But first things first, it's got to break the downtrend line at 835 to get any uh, traction on the uh, upside for uh, a longer term breakout. Microsoft, uh, I just lost the chart. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be able to get that back easily. Um, just from memory, you're gonna wanna look at uh, 286 and 290. Sorry about that, I actually deleted the chart. I have to go back and find that. Uh, Amazon downtrend line coming in i think this morning you get a breakout here at 2980 you're going to have a run to 3030 and potentially up to 3100 on the uh, upside of that and then you know higher after that uh, keep in mind you're going to have a gap opening I would I would not want to see price fall back below 2950 if uh, that would tell me that the breakout failed. You know, if we open up and then they sell it off, fill the gap below, and then proceed south, that would be uh, pretty bearish. Why? Because that would be, in my book, a fake breakout probably going to get a lot of people getting long, you know, see the, the green opening and then they sell it off and then break back below, take it red from yesterday. 
I think you get a lot of people bailing out on that, which would accelerate it to the downside. So uh, be aware of that possibility whenever you have a breakout situation. Uh, nice setup here on Google. I think you've got a pivot point right here about 25.95. You do have a double bottom setup with bullish divergence uh, and 6% from the floor to the top of the structure. So if you get a breakout above, say, uh, 26.70, just from a technical standpoint, uh, you got a 6% measured move target on that breakout. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a lot. 6% is, is, is a lot. And if that were to play out, we've got, I would imagine, a rip roaring rally going in the queues and the fat man names. So uh, be aware of that if you're trading Google. Netflix got a really nice pivot here at 345 got a ways to go before it gets up to the downtrend line then you've got a resistance level at 36250 uh, I think there's a good chance this morning if Netflix participates uh, that would be my first target right here right around uh, 35750. That's where this lateral resistance and the downtrend line uh, come in together. And if it could break through that, get some acceleration to the upside. Semiconductors spent a lot of time right here at 246. I since removed it, but that was the bottom of a uh, prior gap. Has some memory, uh, muscle memory there. So this really looks like a flag structure. If you take from where the flag began, here's your flagpole, here's your flag. That projects up towards 254. So you break above the downtrend line, then you got some uh, horsepower to the upside up towards 258 where it will fill that gap. And then above 258, I think you could see 262. Uh, a couple other charts here. We have Docu sign on the board for a potential bracket trade. Uh, we have uh, since the gap down on earnings, price has just chopped around between the 71 and uh, 77.81 is where this big. Uh, uh, $15 gap comes in. You may want to have that alarm this morning. If you get a gap entry and things are really bullish across the board, you may make some good headway into that uh, uh, today and possibly into tomorrow. You'll have to decide, you know, if you got a gap entry here this morning and you're, you know, you're coming in to Jerome Powell at two o'clock, and you're sitting pretty with a nice gain, you'll have to decide, hey, you know, a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush and take it off and then see what happens after Powell. Or you want to do a lottery ticket. Uh, what I would do, now that I'm thinking about it, say you got long uh, on the gap entry and you got a nice move into Powell, I would certainly roll your strikes up or uh, uh, either at the money or buy yourself a, a 92.50 call. And then if you guess right, you can have a, you know, you'll have a cheaper shot. And if Powell jumps it up, you'll have a winner. And, you know, if it goes the other way, you know, it's a lottery ticket, but you knew that going in. So consider those strategies today on uh, DocuSign 
if we get a gap entry. Another one from yesterday was this Coupa Software. A uh, big rug pull on the open, recovered a lot of that. I would have 76.54 alarmed, and I would have 70 alarmed. Got a big gap to fill, $15 gap to fill to the upside. I don't know if that's going to happen today, but I would have this bracket trade uh, alarmed in your system. If things fall apart and you break back below 70, I would assume it's going to go down to 65. If you get a gap entry at 76.54, you got a good chance for a gap fill on the way back up. One last chart for you this morning. Uh, this Centris Energy LEU had gapped up the other day on earnings and they reversed it hard. They faded the whole thing and brought it down, you know, down to this 30 level yesterday where it got a bounce. What I'm probably going to do here, uh, and this is in the lithium space, I might just get some uh, common and sit on it. Uh, I think the downside is fairly limited. I would probably put a stop in at 30. I mean, if it, you know, if it falls back below the low, what is the low? 29.20. Um, I'll see. I'll let you know if I do it. But uh, this has been a strong stock. And if you go back and look in, uh, look on the weekly, you'll see just how strong a stock it's been. So uh, I, I like the lithium space. Uh, I'm just looking at this as an overreaction to something. Uh, so I might get a little starter going on common. Uh, the reason for common, it's, it does not have a good option chain uh, on this particular name. The spreads are really wide and there's not a lot of volume in the name. So probably just get some common. So let's wrap it up there. Let's do a quick recap before I send you on your way. Jerome Powell. 2 o'clock, Presser, 2.30, Monster, OPEX on Friday. Opportunity for a lot of volatility. Only head into Powell in the end of the week with your highest conviction trades. I would be light. Remember, first move is fake. That's the rule of thumb on the Fed. So you get a move down. They'll probably buy it up. You know, who knows what the algos are thinking. But that's a good rule of thumb. The first move out of PAL is usually fake. Now, that doesn't mean it's tradable for me anyways. Uh, what it means is don't get all panicked on, or excited on that first move. You know, and go in doing a bunch of changes to your positioning because just about the time you do that they're going to reverse it so let the announcement come out let the vol bleed off let's see where it goes and then you know pick up the ball either late in the day or even tomorrow but the fly in the ointments that big opex on friday so the stage is set for a lot of volatility uh through the end of the week I do favor higher, but it's not a high conviction kind of a thing because it can break either way and uh, we have to treat it with, uh, with respect and not go out there with a lot of uh, dart throws. So be careful this afternoon. Uh, if I see anything heading into the print, I will certainly let you know. Uh, so until then, have a great day of trading. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.